Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video, we are going to be talking about 12 steps to start a business. So considering my starting a business in 2020 video has done so well, and so many people have found it useful, I wanted to do a simplified version. So it's basically everything in that without the detail. So obviously, if you want detail on certain elements, then you will need to go back to that video. But this is just a checklist that you can tick through and you can go, right, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. So I've got my 12 steps here and I'm going to be giving you a little bit of detail but most of it we can refer to other videos because I have done other long videos on each of these subjects. So we're going to get right into it. If you haven't already please like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to hear about my new videos and also when I go live. The podcast launched on Monday, so due to some technical issues, which I wanted to quickly mention, I basically lost the first episode. Um, I was editing it and I accidentally deleted the footage. Um, so if you delete the original footage from your iCloud, then it also deletes it from your iMovie. So I had edited it already, but yeah, I lost it. However, I'm actually more pleased with the new episode that came out on Monday. So this... This podcast is going to be coming out every Sunday and I'm planning to do it at 6pm every Sunday. Obviously, if I have any technical issues, I'll keep you updated on my Instagram. So go and follow that. But most of the time it should be up at 6pm and I'm also going to be doing podcast video very soon but at the moment it's just going to be uploaded onto YouTube as audio just because it's another way that people can find the podcast even if you've already listened to it on Spotify um, but it's called The Cake Diaries and it's by Sweet Things by Amy which is me and that's how you can find it on Spotify so we're going to get right into it so we're going to work our way through this checklist and it's all in bullet point form so it should be very easy for you guys to note down all of these points and then hopefully revisit it and work your way through it and tick off when you've done each of those things. The first one is very important and I think you need to do this first and that is decide on a name and industry. So this is a general starting a business. It can be for cake businesses but it's also relevant for businesses in general. So you want to decide on a name because this is something that people need to remember you by. It needs to have some kind of ring to it. It can be relevant to your business but it can also not be. It doesn't have to be. Most people that are in say cake businesses have some kind of like cake, cupcake, brownie, sweet treat, sweet things, something like that in their name because it's easy to resonate with a baking business. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. So that's in terms of cake businesses. But just in general, you want to one check that no one else has that name. I actually, there's no one on Instagram or on YouTube, for example, that has my name. However, there is someone on Facebook. They're not still trading. And I've registered my business as a company, so everyone's aware of that in the current name. However, on Facebook, my app is a different app. So it has Amy Page at the end rather than just Sweet Things by Amy. And that's because you won't be able to find me because this person has the name of my business. And that's just my fault for not checking it. But I would definitely say make sure you've checked it. Make sure you check all social names as well because account names on socials will change and there'll be some that aren't available and some that are available. So you want to make sure that people can actually find you on socials. So in terms of the industry, you want to make sure that you're in the right industry. Um, this is more in terms of like marketing and knowing how and knowing how to promote your brand because if you're fully aware of the industry that you're in and how it works then you can market your brand the best way possible and also it's easier to decide on a name if you're certain on the industry that you're in and you also don't want to register your business in a name that you're uncertain of so yeah definitely make sure it's got some kind of ring to it that you're happy with it it's easy to remember because like mine has a ring to it because of my name whereas I feel like if it was a different name then it could have less of a ring um, but because my name's nice and short it means it has more of a ring to it and I think it's something that's easy to remember Again, if things are too complicated, they won't be as easy to remember. The next thing is to test out products. So I recently listened to a podcast and they mentioned about product testing just in businesses in general. And they said that a rubbish product can't be good with marketing, whereas a good product can be good without marketing. And that basically means that if your product is good, it will speak for itself. Even if you aren't very good at the marketing side, you can have customers and then they will speak about your product in a high 
highly um I don't know what recommended way I don't know what the word is but they will speak about your product in a good way whereas if your products are bad it doesn't matter how much advertising you do how much money you pay for ads anything like that it will still be a bad product so you need to make sure that your product is a good product before you even start the business because you just want to limit the amount of like bad reviews anything like that and bad feedback because word of mouth is so so important and it's really really surprising who knows who i get so many customers that get recommendations from other people and i had no idea that they knew each other there's also people that i knew in school but i don't talk to anymore who now come to me for orders and if they had a bad perception of me in school then they may not have come to me now because that does kind of live on with you um i was fairly like neutral in school didn't cause any trouble um friends of everyone that kind of thing so now people come to me and they're like oh my god i remember you from school and all this but if they had that bad perception of me then they could pass that on to other potential customers whereas luckily they don't um but that's why it's like always be nice to people that um you don't necessarily know that well because it's really surprising who knows who so um yeah make sure that your products are good because you do not want bad word spreading you also don't want bad reviews because on certain sites they last forever like etsy for example if someone writes a bad review on there you can't delete it so yeah it's unlike a website on a website you can approve reviews before they come in whereas things like etsy ebay um depop any like selling place like that they don't get like vetted so someone could put a bad review and then it will ruin your rating so yeah just make sure that your products are good before you start selling them because you want to avoid getting any bad reviews the next thing is to decide on products and flavours. You want to have a bank of flavours and products that you have an idea of what you're selling before you even start. One, because you need to make a price list, which I'll get onto in a minute, but also because you want to be aware of, one, the industry you're in, how you advertise that, and also your competition. So you want to be looking around to check whether there is a high demand for something and whether it's fulfilled. So like in my area, I say this all the time, but brownies are not very common in my area in terms of being sold by other people. I partly think that's because a lot of people do come to me. Um, there are obviously some sellers that do occasional brownies, but a lot of them do cakes and cupcakes. Not many of them do brownies and things like donuts as well is popular, but I don't do donuts at all. So I get quite a lot of the brownie market. That also goes for postals and I found that that was a loophole so I filled it and then um, it's been quite successful in that sense. So I find that that's a good, um, what is it? A place that isn't utilised, um, a gap in the market. So you can find a gap in the market and then fill it with your products. So yeah, you want to do some research on what is out there, the styles of cakes and things that people make. Um, this is if you're talking about a baking business, but it works in general. You want to see whether there is a gap in the market for something that you could make, because then you can capitalise off that. It's going to be something that's popular because it's not made by someone else. Um, and then there's also things which people will come to you for. For example, with me, as much as there's plenty of cake makers in my area, they will come to me because they like my style. So you can make your style another point that makes you unique. So decide on flavors and products also because you want to have a range of flavors because someone might go elsewhere if you don't have a selection of flavors people like to have a lot to choose from but also not too many where it's intimidating i have a lot of wedding cake flavors but i don't have as many um normal cake flavors i'll take requests if someone says oh i really like someone wanted blueberry icing and i was like okay i don't offer that but i'll make it um whereas for cakes i have a lesser amount of flavors because it can be quite daunting and sometimes people just leave it up to me to choose one that i would recommend so have some set flavors and some set products just so that you know where you're starting but also try not to be a jack of all trades because if you spread yourself thin then the quality goes down um so you want to make sure that you're good at things before you add more things to your plate I was terrible for wanting to do everything in the beginning and then I soon reduced that because it wasn't sustainable. 
and now I've managed to up that again so like I do postals as well as all my local orders and I have various other incomes things like YouTube my spreadsheets website designs merch all of that stuff which and also like my molds so I have all those things which I'm spreading myself thin on but I have the ability to because I am more skilled in the other areas so I can afford to spread myself thin but you just need to make sure that you have that skill first because you don't want to lessen the quality of your other things whether that's products whatever industry you're in um it always needs to be a good quality product before you start doing something else so the next thing which follows on from that is to set a price list if you want to know how to do pricing check out my pricing videos which is i think it's how to cost your bake something like that i'll put a ticket for it up above um but that was basically how i cost all my bakes i am going to do an expansion of this because i've slightly changed it recently and i have a different method so i will be updating that video and giving you an idea of how i do it now it's also much quicker um and it's also a bit more individual to the customer rather than a bit more general. Um, everything is exactly priced so that it perfectly fits the customer. Um, so you want to have a set price list just because when people see a starting business, they're going to be asking whether you have a price list, whether you have a brochure of some sort um, or a menu a lot of people ask for. So you want to have at least starting prices. I would say with cakes, be very careful putting a price list on it. I have stopped doing this because, sorry, my phone's going off. Um, I've been very careful doing this because it's so easy for things to add up especially with a cake like a starting price for a cake i have one that i'm currently i booked in for um in a couple of weeks time and it's a four inch cake and the cake is 45 pounds and it started at 35 but with all the extras it was 45 and then they've got flowers and they're real um like edible flowers and that's 25 pounds so it's already a 70 pound cake with the cake topper and the flowers but my starting price is a 35. So you can see how everything adds up. So you just want to be careful that people don't think you're that amount of money because sometimes if you don't give a quote straight away, I always give starting prices straight away and say that any extras can be anywhere between five and 20 pounds extra. So bear that in mind that that will soon add up um, because otherwise people can talk to you about a cake all day and then as soon as you give a quote they might say no thank you that's too expensive so you always want to mention pricing early on and give them an idea because otherwise you could just be wasting your time and admin takes a lot of time um, so the next thing is to set up social media this is very very important in the current day and age social media is probably the most way that you will um, get out of your business. It is so vastly used and also in terms of the accounts that you have to have, I would say have as many as you can manage. I have pretty much everything. I have TikTok, I have Trilla, I have YouTube, I have Facebook, I have Instagram. I don't have Twitter just because I don't think it's for my business. Um, I use it more of like a social thing um, or I used to when I tweeted, but I don't anymore. But it's more of a kind of just your thoughts and some people put motivational stuff on there. I just don't think it's for the business. Um, that's just my personal preference. If you use it, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I have pretty much every platform, which is a good way to get your business out. If you limit yourself to certain platforms, you'll find that you get certain customers from certain platforms. I also have a website and I have Etsy. So yeah, pretty much every platform. And apart from LinkedIn, which I'm hoping to get on soon, um, but the more platforms you have, the more outreach you have. There'll be some people like myself, I don't use Facebook at all. I use it for business, but I don't use it for personal, which there will be some people that also do that, which means that if you only post on Facebook, they're never gonna find you. Whereas Instagram is for the sort of photographers of um, most generations, because it's more photo based rather than necessarily caption based. Facebook, I find, is more based around captions and people just saying things, not necessarily having any photos. I use it to basically reshare my photos that I post on Instagram and also any links to videos, etc. 
and then YouTube is obviously videos. Trilla and TikTok are quick, snappy videos. They need to be interesting, but they also need to be 15 to a minute long. Um, so they've got to be a lot shorter. There's a lot less time for you to get your point across. Um, and then there is website and Etsy which is purely to sell products um, you can have a website to not sell products um, but I probably I mean it's not necessarily needed it depends what industry you're in um, obviously in my industry I think it's best for selling products I probably wouldn't have it if it was just to say I'm a baker based in Buckinghamshire this is some of my cakes which they can go and find on Facebook or Instagram so I don't need that other source um so i find personally that it's good for selling products but you can use it for a variety of things so social media is very very important you can take from that um and you want to set it up early on because what you can do is for cake businesses or any business you when you're planning a launch of some sort whether it's to sell products whether it's you starting your baking business whether it's um you offering services depending on what industry you're in you need to get that build up because otherwise you're going to all of a sudden drop all of this work into an industry and they're going to not know anything about you so you want to start posting way before you're actually trading so most people when they're doing like sales launches anything like that they do lots of teaser photos have promos which i will get onto, and that is a build up and then it teases people into wanting to know more about the business and it creates that following so then you get followers before you actually start releasing any products or services um so i think you want to build up that momentum before you actually start trading i had an instagram and a facebook for two months before i actually left my job and did it full time and registered and all of that just because I was posting weekend photos of anything that I'd baked any new products that I bought so like food colorings I used to post on there any new sprinkles that were available and I kept on saying you know orders coming soon I'm just working on all my recipes and everything and I'd post lots on stories I'd post actual posts I'd post videos all of that stuff meanwhile on my youtube I was also saying that I was starting a business and that will be coming soon so you're creating that teaser and then people want to know more and then by the time you actually register or just in general launch your business you're going to have a bit of a following which is always good because it's that following of people that want to know more about it and potentially buy those products so it means that when you do launch you're not going to have no one knowing about you and you're starting a completely fresh so social media is very important for launching a business so that's that one. The next one is setting up an email address. You want to do this because one, it's professional. So it's always nice that if people don't want to text you, if people don't like to DM, which is short for direct message, then they can email you an inquiry. I find that Gen Z, um, which is my generation, is very like they direct message they um you know instagram posts all of that kind of thing they comment on that that's how they get in touch with you whereas the other generations are more inclined to maybe facebook message me i have people that would like to call me which i actually prefer when i'm taking cake bookings because it's so much easier um but some people prefer to call you some people prefer to email you that also goes for your payment methods which you need to have in line because some people prefer cash some people prefer paypal because it's more secure and then some of the younger generation prefer to bank transfer because that's their preference um but yeah you need to have a range of options so that you're catering for everyone but like i say setting up a email address is very professional it just it can link to all of your socials as well so it's good for that sense i have mine which is sweet things by amy etc um and that is for business inquiries on youtube so that'll be linked down below if you're curious and that means that people can send me stuff to review they can inquire about business opportunities and then i can also have customers that inquire about orders and i also get people from youtube that email me and they ask me some questions about their business and it's just a nice way for people to contact you and yeah some people prefer it over direct messages and also dms can sometimes get lost if you are a big business then sometimes they can get lost because you're getting so many messages 
especially on things like Instagram where people just reply to a story or they tag you in something which isn't necessarily even you. Um, people can tag me in random cake posts just for the sake of it because they want me to see it. Um, even if it's like nothing to do with me. So DMs can get a bit lost because you get sort of non-essential messages coming in there as well as your business inquiries. So that's why email is good because it's a place where it's a bit more limited. So you're going to have a more refined amount of emails and they won't necessarily be junk. Um, so yeah, email address, very important. Then the next one is to organise your documents. It's so important to have this before you register because depending on the situation currently there is a large delay but if you're watching this in a year's time then hopefully there won't be and basically if there if you register your business so this is more in terms of baking businesses but it might be relevant to other areas if you don't have all your documents ready and you register and they arrange to inspect your premises within a week or two of you registering, then if you don't have all your documents together and you're busy, then it just means that you're in a mad rush to get it done and you might not do it to a good standard or you might miss things out. Whereas if you have all your paperwork done before you register, then it means you don't have to worry about it. You can get on with your normal schedule. And this also goes for certain businesses because I know there's things like copywriting and trademarking in businesses which basically means that someone can't take an idea or a business name or designs anything like that um so yeah it means that someone can't copy something from your business and claim it as their own if it isn't copyrighted then it's kind of a free-for-all someone can take it as their own and there's no um, kind of like binding document to say that it's your property. So yeah, there's things like that to consider, especially with people that are starting like clothing brands um, and even like selling your own products that people produce, makeup, um, I feel like coffee, anything like that. There's just so much room for people to steal a name, people to steal a tagline, um, a slogan, anything like that. So you have to have all of that considered as to whether you need to trademark anything. Um, it just depends on the business that you're in. The next thing is to register your business. So this needs to be done for um, company's house and that is for tax purposes as well. You don't have to uh, register your tax straight away. So I will get onto that in a minute but you can do it at the same time. Some people prefer to do it when they register their actual business. So registering your business in terms of baking businesses, this is what will make you legally allowed to trade. I'm not sure how it works with other businesses, um, but for baking businesses, you're not meant to trade without it. And this will kickstart the food hygiene rating process as well so you register your business and then within the 28 days is the aim but due to covid it's been a bit delayed within 28 days they'll aim to come out to your house or your premises and they will inspect it give you a food hygiene rating and then you can move along with your day if you're curious about registering and you don't know how it works especially if you're a baking business or you're even just thinking about starting one then go and check out my to register or not to register if i'm completely honest it's not a question um but it's more that it seems like a question a lot of people ask do i need to register so that's what that title is um but in theory you need to register kind of no matter what um so go and watch that video if you want some more information because it's very detailed and it will go through it in a lot more, um, give you a lot more information. But you need to register your business as the next step. Then you can kickstart the food hygiene rating. They will come to you. This is relating to cake businesses and catering and all of that. Um, restaurants. I believe it works the same with bars. I'm not sure if um, like bars and pubs get food hygiene ratings as well um, because I'm not sure if because they sell drink they still have to have it it depends you'd have to look into it but catering businesses in general um, they need a food hygiene rating so they will contact you I get a lot of questions about this they will contact you if you want to speed it along you can call them and sort of like say to them is there any update? But nine times out of 10, they will come to you um, because they are gonna be working in an order. So if you register after someone and that person is starting trading before you, then they're gonna to wanna to go and check them out because they're already starting to trade. So they try and prioritize 
it in that sense. So the next one is to sort out your advertising and also packaging. You want to have this in order because as soon as you start selling, you're going to need to know your packaging and you're going to be needing to advertise your business and your products and all of that, um, services, anything like that. And packaging is so important because I went through so many different boxes no matter what you're selling you need to know what size box you need the pricing whether it's a good price and also the quantity that you need to start off i went through phases where i was ordering boxes on amazon because i didn't have enough and then they would go out of stock you need to find a good supplier basically because so many um kind of mainstream places like ebay and amazon for boxes they go out of stock really quickly or there's just delivery delays so if you're a business and you're selling constantly you can't be relying on that and I was for a long time and then I found a provider where I can order hundreds at a time so then I can also get them next day so it just means that I can order in bulk and it's more affordable and it's a better product in general because it's not through a mainstream online store so you want to get your packaging sorted because you don't want to be faffing around and you also don't want to be using lots of different packaging one it loses money for you because you'll be ordering things last minute and as soon as they're last minute they're 10 times more expensive um, and also you don't want to be mixing packaging when you're selling to customers because if something fits in the box differently then you're going to need more um kind of like packing um so things like tissue paper packing peanuts bubble wrap anything like that you're going to end up needing more of that which in turn is going to cost you more so it's just best to sort out all of your packaging prior to actually taking any orders and then you will know what fits in what box what you use for what box it makes it a lot less stressful because i know that i had so many issues um with finding good boxes and i was going back and forth and i wasted a lot of money buying boxes which i still haven't used to this day um luckily i'm managing to sort of use them on my products that i sell um but yeah there's so many boxes where it was like too small too big um it didn't look right because it was too big for the product but it wasn't necessarily too big for other things that i sell so yeah it can be a real pain trying to find packaging um but once you have it sorted hopefully you won't have to change it if you want to know anything about baker's packaging then i do have a video on that it's called postal bakes 101 and that has all about my packaging in it if you're curious uh, the next thing is where you're going to be selling so you can decide this at any point um i'm putting this at the end because it's kind of a miscellaneous people decide it at the start people decide it at the end it really just depends but I have changed this multiple times. I really like markets. I didn't plan on doing them in the beginning, but I now would love to. So I'm hoping that I can do more throughout the year as things open up. But initially I was just local and that was the same for six months. And then in December I went to postal as well. So now I'm doing local and postal. And then I went to markets, which I did one in December. So then now I do markets. This again is relevant to any business. You need to know who your target market is, where you're planning to sell. If you're doing online only like postal um, products and it's not necessarily meant to local people, especially if it's not like a cake business, um, any products is going to be an online business. So again, you need to make sure your social media is up to scratch because you're going to be promoting yourself solely online um whereas things like cakes they can be local delivery so then it's also word of mouth so it does really depend on what kind of industry you're in as to where you need to be selling and markets a lot of small businesses sell at markets things like wax melts cakes clothing brands they all sell at markets so like i say it's a range of businesses but it really just depends on one your target market and also your time because things like markets do take a lot of time in order to prep for that however you can earn a lot in one day whereas if you do local orders it might be little amounts spread over multiple days and online orders if it's digital products it can be instant money that you don't have to do anything with um in terms of like sending anything out whereas if you sell products online there is time that you need to have to package those products so it really just depends on one where you want the business to go and also what you would prefer what kind of industry you like so the last thing is what i mentioned earlier which was promos it's so important i feel like i don't need to go into too much detail about this because 
we spoke about it quite a lot um but I just want to kind of finish on promotion is very, very important. Any advertising, anything like that, that is how you get your business out. So being on social media and talking about your business and promoting it before you actually start is a good way to get that launch process going and to build up that momentum and get people wondering about your business and wanting to know more. Um, but just try and use as many platforms as you can to do that. If you can manage all the platforms, then do it. Um, I honestly don't know how I do it sometimes um, but I try and post on them as much as I can and there's not necessarily anything wrong with that you don't have to post on them every day but posting on them regularly so that people know that you're still there because sometimes if you don't post for a while people do wonder where you are so if you can keep up the posting then people will engage with that and then you'll gain followers and gain likes and hopefully in turn gain customers so yeah I think that is all of my tips. We're getting gradually darker and darker because it is the afternoon when I'm filming. I needed to film this earlier. Um, but I'm hoping that was helpful. If you have any more questions, then please comment them down below. I'm happy to answer any questions um, either in messages or you can just comment them on the YouTube videos. This goes for any video. Just comment them down below or give me a DM on Instagram and I will get back to you at some point um sometimes the youtube comics takes a little longer just because i'm busy um but yeah i will try and get back to you guys to answer any questions that you guys have and if you haven't already please like and subscribe and i will see you in my next video i hope this was helpful to those of you that had any questions and yeah i will see you in my next video bye guys